it's Renee. Welcome to my channel. So if you saw the title, you'll see that I just got my May BoxyCharm, or my June BoxyCharm delivered today. Last month was May. It is the day after that I got home from Disney and E3 and Universal, and I'm very tired. But I was really excited to get this because I've been really looking forward to this box. I think it's a very pretty and interesting box because it comes with a lot of different things than what I've gotten. Here it is. If you would like to see this BoxyCharm, try on get ready with me stay tuned and we'll get into it so the main reason that i came to you with no face makeup on i actually got a sample well not a sample this is technically like their smallest size which i guess is a sample size it's a sol de janeiro it's like their fast absorbing body cream which helps tighten and smooth like no other but yeah this is supposed to be kind of like a it's a, like a moisturizer and you can use it on like your body and i guess it's just like an all over like body thing and I was reading some of the reviews online because I've heard about this and it's supposed to be really really good. I was reading some reviews and a lot of people were like I use this on my face because even though I like I've seen some people are like yeah I have oily skin and I use it on my face. I generally have oily skin like I have an oily forehead and like this whole part's just oily so yeah like T zone I guess. But I was like oh, okay cool that sounds interesting so what I'm gonna do I'm actually gonna just put just kind of like a moderate amount on my face because actually right here is super dry I am a little bit worried about using it on my face just because I do I don't really have sensitive skin but I like to just kind of stay away from fragrances because certain products like certain fragrance products I could be totally fine with and it like won't even matter and then other stuff it'll be like oh time for a breakout so it really just kind of depends on what it is yeah so this size retails for 10 I did look it up before because I almost bought some recently I was actually gonna buy it and then I saw that it was gonna be in the boxy charm and I was like oh wait and this actually this retails for $10 and you get 0.84 fluid ounces so just under an ounce or just a little bit under an ounce for 10 bucks that's not bad a bigger size you can get for $20 which I think is two ounces and then there's an even bigger size you can get for like 45 but it's like a huge tub of it but yeah probably if I like this because I'm going to use this on like my face and I'm going to use it on my elbows and my feet because those are generally my drier parts of my body and so I'm going to see if I like it and if I like it I'll buy like the more medium sized one but I've heard great things about this it's supposed to genuinely be like really like firming and like make your skin look great oh that smells really good yeah, this does, it really, it does smell like pistachios and jasmine. What a weird, oh my gosh, what like a weird thing to put together, but it smells really good. That's how much comes in. I think because it was sitting off to the side in my mailbox that it kind of sunk. But there's a ton on the thing too, so I'm just going to use a bunch up here. And, you know, why waste it? I'm just going to put a little bit on my nose, a little bit right here, a little bit right there. Take some from my nose. Put it right there. T-zone. And then I'm going to put just a couple of dots on my face. I'm going to go do some laundry and let it sit, and then I will come back. Put my foundation on and then we'll try out the other products well i was gonna go do laundry but it's already like been only like a couple minutes and it's completely sunk into my face like my forehead is completely dry the only that's still a little bit kind of is just because i just put it on is my under eyes but yeah it's oh my face does feel kind of soft it would be hard to say because i'd have to use it like multiple times but like it doesn't feel bad i really am curious to see because my skin doesn't really have i don't really have a ton of dry skin i'm curious to see what like long term use it would be on my elbows and my elbows get a little really dry i usually have to like kind of exfoliate them a little bit because they can get really rough fast they do feel very soft though so that's nice but yeah so i'm going to put on some foundation and i'm going to set my face and then i will be back so we can try out the other stuff that we got see you in a sec okay so my base is done so normally what I do is I do my kind of face first and so I'll probably go in with face products first rather than eyes just because this is how I always do things so yeah these are the this is the brush set I haven't opened it yet I haven't felt how soft they are or not $42 isn't too bad for a brush set I think these are more worth it than these small aesthetica brushes that I got mainly because one of them isn't a spoolie I mean, these are soft I would say this one bristly one is probably the least soft but that's because there's less bristles yeah, and these ones kind of look similar, but this one's a little bit more dense, whereas this one's a little bit more pointed and dense. But they honestly, oh, actually these kind of look the same. Yeah, so tapered highlighter, so this one's for highlighting, this one's for foundation, which I will never use. I would probably, had I known, I probably would have gone like that with them, but you know. And then this one is the duo fiber powder. Yeah, I just, maybe this one could be for contouring. I could probably use that for contouring. Maybe use this one for blush, and then I'll use one for highlighting. Okay. We have a plan. So, my favorite thing that I got from my last box, I used my Pure Sculptor palette. I usually am using the Inventor shade because it's really good. Oh, that's the wrong one, shit. I'll just go in with the Duo Fiber brush because I have seen people use bronzer and like high or contour with that. I like a more like 
fluffier kind of a brush to do these kind of things with. So let's see. I mean, it is just like a dual fiber brush. I don't really know if it's anything special. I feel like you get a little bit less control. That's why I prefer a fluffier brush though, because I feel like this can look really harsh really fast, and I feel like that's what's happening. So I'm gonna have to clean that up with blush and powder. But yeah, I mean, I don't really know if it's anything super special. Like I've been using the, um, I got the Aesthetica brush in the last one, the big one, and I was saying how I do think it is kind of expensive, but I do use it all the time now, like a lot. And so like, I, I do think that even though maybe some brushes are a little bit more expensive, they can definitely be worth it. But what I'm thinking about doing after doing this box, I think I'm about doing, um, a boxy charm like three month update video and whether or not I'm gonna keep doing it I think I am because I do really like everything that I've gotten well not everything but for most of the stuff that I've gotten I liked I'm gonna go in with blush next which I feel like I might be a mistake using these small brushes but maybe it won't be that big of a deal all right so this is the tapered highlighter brush so I'm gonna use this one would be better for highlighting I don't know I'm gonna use the fluffier one for I'm gonna use the fluffier highlighter one I feel like that would make more sense I mean, I feel like that worked. It doesn't look bad. It's probably not as fluffy as I would like it to be because it takes a little bit longer, but it works. You know, Ooh, I got blush on my dress. Cool. Next, we're gonna go in with the Ofra Nikki Tutorials collab. Out of the collab that I got, this is way better than the lipsticks. And I'm just gonna go in with this and kind of just go in with the lighter shades. Tap it off. These pick up like a lot of product. I'm very surprised. Maybe because they are supposed to generally be more of a Oh yeah, see, I feel like this one should be the highlighting brush because it's a little bit more dense and a little bit more concentrated. Cause like, see, like, look at that. Yeah, I've been really feeling this. I do still love my Carly Bible one a lot. It's just that one's a little bit harder. Like, if you're going on vacation, it's harder to take like a whole palette with you, just because like it's a really big palette. I usually just take. I honestly don't even usually take mask or um, not mascara eyeshadow when I go on vacation. I usually just take like a some type of a contour palette or something because I just generally, if I am gonna put on mascara, it's just gonna be like a typical, like a plain smoky eye. And I just don't have time for really dramatic stuff all the time. Highlight is on, so I was looking at my face. I still need to kind of blend out my face makeup a little bit. But I feel like my skin looks so good today. Like, I don't know if it's just me, but I feel like it looks extra soft and extra smooth. And also my foundation went on really good today too, like once it all settled down and everything. I still need to obviously, like I said, I'm gonna blend out all of this, but I feel like my face, like my highlight doesn't look so textured. Shit, maybe that bone on stuff is real good. I feel like my face just looks good and I'm like weird about it. It's so strange. Obviously I'm just kind of like aggressively blending. And up here, but yeah, I feel like my face looks so good and I just like don't understand. I'm like, is it just me? Cause I haven't really put on like a full face in a while cause I've just been doing kind of more natural stuff. I haven't done this in like ever, I don't think. This is in, this is the Jean de Bleu Waterproof Eyeliner, eyeliner pencil in charcoal. I've never tight lined before just because I don't ever really have eyeliner on me. And so I never like, I just never do it, I guess. And so I'm kind of nervous about it cause I don't want to like accidentally stab myself. But, oh no, I put my phone cord in my foundation, okay. Yeah, I'm going to try and tight line. Where'd my thing go? There you are. And we're just going to like see. So I'm going to grab this Mia. And we're just going to see how this goes. How do you even tight line? I don't even know. So you too, I don't really understand why they couldn't have given it to us in black. I feel like charcoal is like a strange color. Maybe because it is supposed to be more warm and not like a harsh black. But I feel like, let me see, let me swatch it for you. I mean, it feels very soft and it is definitely a charcoal color. I don't know. Can you tell a difference? It doesn't even feel like anything's going on my eye. Because like I would probably never use this in my waterline. 
just because I feel like it makes my eyes look very small. I know this is not good to be tugging at your eyes this much, but I feel like once you actually like put it on, it's a lot grayer like on your eyes. I feel like that did nothing. Try the other side. Maybe I'll try more like right here. Sometimes it's crazy whenever I see beauty gurus, sometimes I'll just be like, and they just like go in and do it, and I'm like, how? Maybe we'll try a little bit on top. I don't know, I think there's a little bit there. I feel like I can't really tell though, like there's nothing on, like in the spaces in between my lashes, so I'm just confused. Just like I said, it feels very creamy. It smudges off super easy, so I don't know how waterproof it super is, but you know, that felt like a wash, but what are you gonna do? We're gonna go in with the thing that I was looking forward to the most. So yeah, this is the Olimar Cosmetics palette. And look at it, it's so pretty. Like that's the only thing is I'm not usually like a blue person, so I don't know how often I will use blue. I was kind of more focused on like these because I think these are so pretty. And I think that these will be really pretty, like this one will be a really pretty inner corner highlight. Maybe I could run a little bit of blue underneath my waterline because that's typically pretty much all the blue I can usually handle on my eyes just because I'm not, I don't know, I'm not really a blue person. I like the packaging though. I think it's very cute. I think it's very pretty. It's very summery. I like that it's kind of just a little like book almost. But yeah, it is really cool. So each shade has, you can go in with these ones with wet because they're like a metallic and then these ones you go in with dry. Yeah, so I ordered some more brushes out of Amazon. I want to try this one. It's like a pointy little blender brush that I found. So... I think I'm gonna put down Coco Taxi as a transition shade. Let's see, so not a lot of fallout, just a little bit. It's hard to tell that it's on there because it's actually very similar in color to the brush. But yeah, not like really any fallout at all, so that's nice. I wish it did come with a mirror, but it's fine. Let's see. Okay, yeah, this is definitely, I think, supposed to be like a traditional transition shade because it's more of like a wash. Let's see. Oh yeah, that's pretty. You could totally just kind of like a nice little like wash of color of this would be very pretty. But yeah, not really any fallout right here or right here, which can happen sometimes. I was really excited to get this box though, because and I missed out on getting the March one. I was going to with like the Pure and BoxyCharm collab that had an eyeshadow, eyeshadow palette in it, I think it was. Yeah, that's a pretty nice little like light transition shade. Yeah, and I was like, oh, okay. And I was really excited for this one because also too, it comes with like fake lashes and everything. And I was like, oh, this will be kind of a fun thing to do. The only thing that's funny about those lashes, I feel like they're like really tame kind of for what this palette is. This kind of looks like the, um, isn't there an Urban Decay palette that just came out like this? This is only $28 for eight shades, which is, let's see, eight goes into 28 three times minus that. So they're like $3.50 a shade, I think is how much it is. I'm pretty sure that's how much it is. But I'm pretty like, I feel like this looks a lot like, yeah, that Urban Decay palette and then I don't know how much is actually in these so it's yes yeah, so it's 11.2 grams it doesn't say how much it is per shade but I'm sure I can just like put that on the screen and let you know myself I know I always ask what has everyone been doing I'd be happy if you told me what you've been doing and how you how you've been doing in the comments down below if you want to do that but yeah I just got back from Disneyland E3 and Universal yesterday we did like a big thing so we went to Disneyland for a day I'm gonna post a vlog about this and then we did Universal on Monday so we did Disney Sunday, Universal Monday, E3 Tuesday, and then nighttime Disney, and then Wednesday we went to E3 again and then came home. And I'm very tired. <laughs> like, just because E3, it's not that I'm like physically tired. E3 is one of those things where I love to go, but it is mentally trying. Oh my God. I don't know if it's just like, I was talking to my friends and I came to this realization that I just don't know if I, even being a nerd myself, I just don't know if I want to like date other nerds, I guess is the best way to say it. Because I haven't really been in like too many relationships. Oh, I've been in like one relationship before and that just didn't work out. But I just like don't know if I really want to like date nerds anymore. So hear me out. So I love video games. I love comic books. I, I am okay with movies. I'm not like a big movie person. I love anime. I love books. I love all of that. And I don't know, I just feel like, just because it's kind of like the, the whole thing about E3 is that it's like an industry event, you can go there, you can test out video games, and like where I work, I run into a lot of these like guys that come in and they just think that they're so like superior and they just feel the need to like, I guess just tell you their information and like correct you, even though sometimes the shit that they say, they'll be like, oh yeah, this is true, and I'm like, but it's not though, and then they'll be like, yeah it is, and I'll be like, no it's not, 
like I'm like what do I know though I only work at this place I get it, it's only like a little like part-time job and everything and I like do like social media and I do like retail stuff for them too but it's like they'll just come in and they'll just talk to me like this and I'm like wow this is so great and just like going to E3 you're kind of like hyper exposed to that now obviously there are a lot of like normal nerdy dudes who aren't like this those are just not the ones that I run into so I'm gonna go in with Tropico and kind of build the outer part with it which is kind of this more like fluffier crease or fluffier blending brush it was just like just hearing some of like I just hate this like weird sense of superiority that like I mean I think a lot of guys have this but especially just like if you're a girl and you are in like the industry like if you're in like the video game industry you're in like some type of movie industry I just want to know where guys get their rocks off telling girls the information that they already know or they think that they can better explain it to you I just can't imagine being with someone who just thinks that they have this right to just correct me constantly I feel like anytime that these guys come into my work they come in there with like their sense, just like their huge sense of superiority. And have you ever seen any anime? You know those guys that have like, they're like the glasses characters and they like push up their glasses and it like shines and they like are about to like go like lay into some like dumb people or some shit. That's how these guys act. And that's how it is just kind of going to E3. I met, I was really sad. I met um, Tim Geddes from Kind of Funny. They're like a production company in San Francisco. Well, they make like stuff like for like, their channel and like rooster teeth I might have gone a little ham on this orange they make like videos for YouTube and then I met um a Jeremy from Achievement Hunter and I was really excited I'm like to me like they're like just normal dudes like they love video games like they love to play and it's just really cool to meet them because I'm fans of both of them and then you meet like the regular people like the regular guys and you're just like oh my god like why are you like this like I just can't imagine going up to someone and being like well actually this is how it works or like well actually the last jedi um luke he had a major character assassination or well actually um i don't know it's just like shit like that where it's like well actually dumbledore wasn't gay even though like jk rowling said that he was which he just, he just didn't establish it in the book so he's not it's not part of the canon and i'm like she's the author she can establish what other canon that she wants or like well, actually, it wasn't like this in the book. And I'm like, I'll tell people, like, yeah, that's kind of weird that they didn't really keep that up with the book or something like that. I don't know. I just, like, I just can't. And so that's kind of, like, a lot of what E3 is. If you run into people like that there, they're just, like, so superior. And I'm just like, please stop it. Like, I don't want to talk to you about this. I want to talk to you about things that I enjoy. Like, if I meet you in line and we start chatting about things that we really like, like, I did the new demo for, I tried the new demo for Pokemon Let's Go Eevee and Let's Go Pikachu, and the guy I was talking to, like, he had a Triforce tattoo on his hand, and I was like, oh, like, sick tattoo, dude, and he's like, oh, thanks, cool, um, and then, like, we started talking about, like, oh my god, like, Pokemon is so crazy how much it's changed, it looks so good, it kind of reminds me of, like, the GameCube games and, like, all this stuff, and we're having, like, a really great conversation, and I'm just like, why can't more nerdy guys just be like this? Just be like normal and just not like, I don't know, just not like, not, I guess not derogatory, but like feel the need to explain things to me when in general, I feel like I know a lot about this stuff. I don't know everything, obviously. It just like pisses me off. I hate the concept of just like mansplaining because it is so prevalent in any field that a girl exists in. It just like makes me so angry. So that's kind of why I know it's a huge tangent, but like, I don't know it just pisses me off because I'm like listen bitch like I have literally been playing video games since I was a kid if I wanted an explanation from you I would ask I would google it I'm gonna go in with Coco Taxi again and I'm gonna run that over my lid with like a flatter brush just because I want I don't want like clear lids I just want like a full-on color over it but yeah, I can't decide if I'm gonna put a glitter on top of this or not. I maybe will put Lacosta on my lids. I can't decide. Yeah, that's what sometimes what E3 can be a lot about. And it's just like exhausting for me. It's kind of why I used to want to get a job. I'm gonna go in with Caf Cafecito and kind of build that up in the outer corners a little bit. Just to give it a little, that might've been a lot. Oh no, I'm gonna blend that out after. But yeah, that was just kind of how I felt like being there. And it's like, I used to want to get a job in like the video game industry. I just like I get it like mansplaining is like everywhere but I just like I just can't do it like I just feel like it's so exhausting to talk to people like that and like this actually I think is maybe a little bit patchy but I feel like it's just so exhausting talking to people like that where you're just like can people just enjoy things can people just like things and even if you make a mistake like who cares or like I got a comment the other day it was like oh like I'll forgive you for the death, death leopard comment 
Like, my bad. I heard that, like, at least in some parts of their albums, that they could be considered a glam band. And I talked to my mom, and she's like, yeah, maybe in certain cases, but not always. And I was like, oh, okay, that's my mistake. And then I get a comment that's literally like, I'll save you from future embarrassment. I'm like, I wasn't embarrassed. It was a simple mistake. Like, it was literally a simple mistake. My bad. I'm not going to go in and correct myself because it's not that big of a deal. It's just a comment that I made. And I'm definitely going to blend out the edges, too, with some, some translucent powder. But yeah, I know that's just kind of why sometimes E3 can be really exhausting because you just hear this stuff all day or if people talk to you in line, they like have to talk. They, It's almost like they're kind of like questioning why you're there and you're like, excuse me. Like, I know I'm only going for like my business, but I genuinely love video games and everything or not my business, but the business I work for. But I genuinely really do like love video games. And I don't really, I'm not questioning you like why you're here because if I was, you would have to explain it to me. Like, I don't know, it's just a strange thing that I just don't understand and that I've never understood because I'm like, you should just be able to let people enjoy things and that should be it. Yeah, I will be posting a vlog of my trip there and to Disney and to E3. I just thought I'd share a little bit of my thoughts about why it's exhausting being a woman in an industry that you love. And I mean, like, that's kind of like what I went to school for originally. I wanted to pursue video game journalism. And I just like don't know. Like I used to do like video games and reviews and stuff for the paper that I wrote for, but I just like don't know anymore. I just like can't be with someone like that, you know? Like not even be someone like that. I just can't, it's so hard to like want to be in an industry where I get it, it's not always like this, and I live in California, so it probably wouldn't be that bad. I just don't wanna be in an industry where I almost feel like I'm not wanted in a way, unless I'm like really skinny, really bubbly and everything, and I just am like, I'm, I feel like I'm pretty bubbly, but I'm obviously not skinny. And I don't know, I just feel like it's almost as if you're not wanted if you're not like that. And it's, it's hard to want to pursue something that you ultimately feel like. But then again, it's like I could go into it, and maybe I can actually break some boundaries, who knows? But it is hard to kind of have this uncertainty where you're like, well, just because you like something doesn't mean you should go into the industry for it because you could end up hating it, which is like my biggest fear because video games fill such a, I don't want to say a void in my life, but they're like something that I've always loved and always appreciated. They're like books too. Like for me, like before I went to video games, I would do books and then I kind of like really, I used to play video games when I was a kid and then I kind of got really back into them in middle school and high school. And I don't know, it's just like, I just don't ever want that to be like ruined for me. They're like this special kind of escape, I think. I think this eye looks a lot better than this eye. This eye looks muddy, but we're just gonna press on. I don't know if I'm gonna do any shimmers on top. I think I'm gonna just do shimmer on the bottom. So I'm gonna take this little flat brush. I'm gonna try wetting it, cause that's what it says that it's for. But let's try it with dry with a brush right here. Okay, yeah. I think you could build it up, but it wouldn't be as impactful. This is really pretty. This is like a mermaid color. But yeah, I feel like my skin looks so good today and I'm like really pumped about it. Let's see, let's try swatching these because these swatch really well with a finger, but we're gonna try it wet and see how it goes. Mm, it's okay, wet. I feel like still the best swatch was with a finger. Let's try one more pass. It's not bad though. I think this is just such a pretty color though. It's so unusual. It's not like anything else that I own. So I'm going to kind of just put this underneath like on my lash line right there just to kind of use it let's see oh i just definitely poked my eye with that great i think i'll stop kind of like right there with the blue maybe with the dark do the darker blue on the outside wet it and we're gonna do a wet swatch with this this like a crazy veradero color this is like okay yeah this one definitely goes on a little bit better wet but it's definitely not the same as a finger swatch. I feel like the finger swatches are like wild, but it's still very pretty. That blends really nice in the middle right there. You can, it's a nice little like gradient. I'm just gonna do like a little bit. Let's just do a little bit right there. I know this looks wild. I'm just trying to use all the colors. And with Lacosta, cause I don't really see myself using El Malacan for this. That's pretty. Okay. This could have been used as a highlight, probably. It's very pretty. And then I'll put it under my brow bones when I, or my brow bones, my brow bone when I do my eyebrows. Yeah, the next thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go in with lashes. These are, again, from Baddington Lashes. I think this is a very cute box. It's like magnetic. And it says, if all this fails, 
bat your eyelashes which I think is a little sexist but whatever but yeah these are just kind of some like more neutral kind of separated more natural lashes they feel very soft and they look very nice and yeah if you can get 25 wears out of these that's crazy I just feel like they're gonna be very tame for what I decided to do today I just wanted to make sure like I said I did all of it these are a very chill lash for what I did today Rut row. yeah I'm back with lashes on I feel like these make the eye look make sense on my face because before when it was just my regular lashes it was like oh hello I also filled in my brows I put on a little brow bone highlight I'm kind of like damn bitch you really went for it with this wing but okay really the only thing I have left now is the Ofra long lasting liquid lipstick so I like I said I have used these before I have the Nikki tutorials ones I think they're very bad and I think they're very streaky but this one is in the shade Verona it kind of looks like a, a brown pinky nude Damn, okay, really though? Like, don't get me wrong, I've been really loving all the stuff I've gotten from BoxyCharm, but I feel like all of the lipsticks they've been sending have been so tonally similar, which is fine. Like, it's always good to have more nudes. Like, I didn't really have that many nudes beforehand. This looks like the same as the color Amazonian that I have, but it's a lot more like of a matte formula. So we're gonna just put this on. I remember when I first got these, I didn't realize that these weren't like matte lipsticks really. They're really just like long lasting lipstick. This is very cool toned and very brown, which I feel like doesn't really fit with the, with like what I have going on. I don't really know this is a really good nude I think I will use this again I thought it was similar in tone to the color Amazonian from the Maybelline Superstay matte ink but it's actually a little bit more tan but it is very pretty I do like it like I said I don't really know if it matches this but it is pretty I think I overlined under here a little too much but yeah so for this box I feel like this box actually went by very fast even though I was doing eyes and lashes and everything so to kind of go through each product I do like these this one I'm still kind of on oop, my hair I'm still kind of on the fence about just because like I mean it worked fine I'm just not usually a dual fiber brush person just because I don't really put my foundation on this way nor do I put on like concealer that way or any other type of like liquid or cream product I just don't I like this a lot for highlighting even though it's the precision foundation brush and this is good for blush I think it would be good to kind of go in afterwards and kind of like blend it out a little bit more I do think it takes a little bit longer to apply a blush this way just because it is a smaller brush but I do think these are definitely they're a little bit pricey and I think you could find these on Amazon but they're not bad they're very soft and they do feel very good I'm super feeling this I think this is very pretty I love the packaging I think it's very cute I like both of these I think they are better finger swatch or you can just really build them up with a brush this is pretty I haven't tried this yet obviously on my eyes these are gorgeous I love this a lot this I'm gonna try again I don't know if maybe it just looked patchy on here but I really had to kind of blend it in with this which is kind of strange because usually I feel like matte browns are like the easiest shade to make do you like these lashes I feel like they're very nice I feel like obviously they're not as dramatic as they usually go for they're more of a typical lash this I probably would use my regular lashes on but I had these and I think they're very good they're staying on very well I use just like my typical eyelash glue the eye lore one and yeah it's really nice another thing to note about this is sometimes whenever I try new um, eyeshadows they can very much like irritate my eyes if I'm not careful and so these are not irritating my eyes at all which is super great because sometimes when I do stuff like this I'll be like my eyes are like burning and I like don't know why but yeah I do like these lashes a lot I'm gonna really see if they do last 25 pairs that seems like a lot but with proper care they said that they would but this, I really like this color Verona I could totally see myself using this with more of like some cool tone shades because it is a lot more cool tone than I was expecting but I do think that it is very nice what's funny is that it doesn't say that it's matte anywhere but it definitely does dry down matte whereas the other ones I have don't dry down matte at all I also got this too this is the the eyeliner pencil I mean I didn't really see even any pigment being transferred onto my eyes I don't know if I was just doing it incorrectly but I'm not usually like a waterline person just because they feel like it really shrinks my eyes but I feel like nothing really comes on unless you do it on like regular skin so like I don't know but I'm gonna definitely keep trying this more but right now I'm not really a fan all right, so this I'm not totally sure if it did something, but I do feel like my face, like I feel like something looks different about my foundation. It's the same foundation that I always use, and I really like it even more than I usually do. Like I feel like my face just like looks good. 
I don't know it's very weird because usually I forgot to set my face which I'm gonna do in a second but usually this is kind of how I can kind of get my face to look once I set my face it kind of helps blend everything in but this almost kind of helped blend everything in before I even had to set my face and even before I forgot to do a thing of it but I had like this really nice glow like on my skin and I'm like I think this might work I think this might be really like a cult favorite for a reason it smells really great this is only 10 bucks if you want to get a little one like this or there's a $20 one that's bigger obviously but I don't know I'm really kind of feeling how my skin looks today also too I liked that Lacosta shade it's an inner corner highlight it's quite blinding and it's very pretty especially on the brow bone too but yeah I feel like most of this stuff so I liked the lashes I liked this the brushes were good so really the only thing and also too I like this lips liquid lipstick I think it's very pretty but only thing I would say maybe kind of eh about is the five dollar thing and so I think that that's definitely super worth it I'm gonna probably still like I said keep getting BoxyCharm but I'm gonna do an update video and kind of talk about each product that I've gotten in each box and see which ones that I would buy again and which ones I think that aren't really worth it. I hope you liked this video. If you did, leave a like down below, comment, and subscribe. It'd be great to have you here. Again, my name's Renee. Thanks for watching. Bye.